What's up guys, Eli here, back for a, a new stuff video. Um, got some pretty cool stuff actually, uh, just, you know, random things I've been collecting over the last couple weeks. Um, not a lot of, like, not a lot of extreme metal stuff here, so I mean, for those of you, I know there are some of you that are kind of in it just for that, and I get it. Um, yeah, there's not a lot of that here, and there's a lot more movies than, uh, than I usually have, but it's just, is what it is. Um, I don't really plan on stuff that I buy, I mean... It's just kind of usually spur of the moment. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I guess we'll start with the music. Um, because there is some cool stuff to be found here. Uh, I've got a couple 2021 releases. I've, I have not heard anything off either of them. So I don't really have any thoughts as of yet uh, on those. Um, so yeah, the new releases being uh, the brand new album from Hooded Venice. I've always liked this band. I've followed them from the start. Um, I don't have all their stuff, but yeah, Season of Mist Records, Digipack, uh, West Bend Scoter cover art. I think their logo looks really good in that blue, by the way. Um, yeah, really, really good Doom Death band out of Finland. Um, I've liked all their stuff. I, 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 I thought their last album, um, was it 2019 or something like that? I thought that album was actually particularly strong. Um, you could almost maybe call it a comeback album of sorts. Um, not, not that they needed a comeback or anything. I just thought it was maybe a little stronger than the album or two before that. But those were pretty good, too. And yes, I have the obligatory Iron Maiden album, Sajitsu. Um, haven't even heard the, <laughs> the two singles from this album yet. Um, I, just, I just wanted to wait. You know, until the actual album was out. So this is just the regular. Um, this is just the standard CD version. They have like there's a couple different versions, like a steel book and layout wise and cover art and artwork and all that shit. As usual, it's stellar. Because um, Iron Maiden, they just always deliver that for some reason. They're they're very good with um, like what they give to their fans. I even have a poster. Um, I don't think I'm gonna grab it. I have a poster they, uh, at my local record store they gave me for buying the CD. Pretty decent sized poster. Just the, it's the cover. I mean, you just saw that, but, uh, anyways, got a couple other things. Uh, just old stuff. Nothing, um, nothing new. In fact, this is from 1989. Uh, Combat Records and Earache joint release. Licensed by Relativity Records. I actually didn't know Combat ever had a hand in this, in this band at all. Um the debut album from Godflesh, Street Cleaner. Um, I used to appear back in the day. I got rid of it years ago and wish that I hadn't. So, I mean, I really haven't heard a lot of Godflesh in many, many, many years. And, I, and they're never a band that I really delved into. So, yeah, we'll get, get back into them, I'm thinking. I also got this just randomly yesterday. This is another band I've, I've always really, really enjoyed. This is one of their sort of earlier releases. What, 94? <coughs> um, <coughs> Louie, stop. Louie. Dogs, what can you do? Come here. So, <laughs> I got Kites. Welcome to Sky Valley. Louie, welcome to Sky Valley. Um, this is back back in their Electra days, back when they were assigned to Electra, same label as Metallica. Yes. Louis. Um, this is a really, really good album. I haven't heard it for a long time. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I, I have two other Caius albums, and yeah, I've always liked them. I've, I've always wanted to get more, so Welcome to Sky Valley. This is actually um, considered their best album by a lot of people. Louis, lay down. Lay down. And I've had this on vinyl for years, but I just, I never really uh, play it a lot. Um, I'll probably play it a lot more that of, now that I have it on CD, but this is a, a great, great live album, Genesis Three Sides Live. Uh, this came out in 82, so it is kind of that later 70s, early 80s Phil Collins fronted, uh, you know, uh, set list, but it is... If you like those songs at all, um, I mean, this is a, a really, really fantastic live album. It, it just is. Um, but I mean, of course, yeah, two discs. Of course, you got to be into those songs first, or you know, 
that magic will be lost on you. This curiosity here, I don't, I did not expect to see this, nor have I ever seen this. So this is, this is a weird one. I got this really cheap and it actually goes on Discogs for fairly high. Um, it's not in great condition though, so I don't know. I, I didn't buy it to, to resell or anything, but I got this, uh, coincidentally, one of my favorite, maybe my favorite Danzig albums. Uh, Danzig 3, How the Gods Kill. It's like special edition, like raised 3D box. It's pretty cool. Uh, judging by this large box, you'd think that, you, that it came with more stuff. Um, <laughs> it does not come with a lot of stuff. You open this big box. It's it's cool. I, I, I wouldn't have paid a lot of money for it. I got it like for six bucks. You got the, the album with different artwork. Way less cool artwork, might I add. <laughs> um, and it's just a regular album. No bonus tracks or anything like that, I don't think. Ten songs? Was it ten? Was it? Was Danzig 3 ten songs? I think it was. And you get... A VHS tape that's like six minutes long it's got I think it just has um, how the gods kill title track on it or something yeah it's five minutes and 56 seconds it's cool it's cool it's not that cool but it's pretty cool um, and for whoever owned this <laughs> left these random things in here a magazine clipping of John Christ Sure, why not? And then this, I, I don't, um, not really sure why, the, why this, this meant something to this guy. Uh, I guess it's kind of funny. Maybe, maybe this was the dude that, uh, that sent this letter in, putting rancid in your magazine. Almost made up for the paper you wasted on No No, Bet and Cheese, March '95, and Mike McCready. No No Bet and Cheese. I'm assuming that he's talking about Nuno Betancourt from uh, Extreme and Mike McCready from uh, Pearl Jam. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. Um, like I said, cool. I mean, this thing goes. This goes for well over eighty bucks, up into the the hundred, over a hundred dollar mark on uh, Discogs. Um, condition of of course means a lot, and this it's not in terrible condition, but it's not in great. Like I said, I didn't buy it to resell or anything, but I'm just saying I would not have paid. I got this literally for six bucks. Would not have paid more than probably fifteen for it. Um, it's it's just simply cool. I really have no use for it. Welcome to the collector life, I guess. So that's it for the CDs. I got some cool ass movies. Um, this movie I've seen before in the past. I just really, really, really wanted to rewatch it. Um, I guess because one of my coworkers has been talking about the the, the, sh the series. There's a series based on this movie um, that he said is pretty good that's running right now. And made me remember the movie and just how much I liked it, and I didn't own it. Uh, Twelve Monkeys. Always thought this movie was really really superb as far as as far as you know mainstream filmmaking goes back in you know what ninety two thousand five. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a fantastic movie for what it is. Bruce Willis, Brad Pitt, Madeline Stowe, um, Terry Gilliam, it's the director. It's 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 a great movie, I think. And uh, another one that, uh, for some fucking reason, I didn't own. I'm, I'm sure I probably lost it. Um, surely I, I owned it. <laughs> uh, I know I've owned it at one point on VHS, but I, I probably have had this on DVD and just didn't know where it went. Really wanted to rewatch it, so I rebought it. Um, I was just gonna get the standard movie or whatever, but this was fairly inexpensive, actually. This uh, 30th anniversary edition of Aliens Come, comes in this cool kind of hard box. And pull that out. Of course, it's you know it's got the standard Blu-ray, and then it's got some pretty cool art cards and illustrated comic reprint. Pretty cool stuff. I, I do. I think I got this for fifteen dollars. I definitely don't regret it. Um, it's got this cool comic book with uh, an alien drawn by all different art 
artists, including some of my favorites like uh, Bernie Wrightson. Big Bernie Wrightson fan. I won't go through all of them. Um, I'm sure that would be pretty cool, but I just think it'd be boring. Um, Mike Manola. And yeah, there's many, many others. But it's pretty cool. And it's got these like kind of postcard things. Um, they're pretty cool as well. It, a lot of it's concept art from the movie. Um, I'll skip the kind of... Some of them are less impressive, to be honest. Some of them are very sick, though. Uh, it's got the pregnant queen. I mean, these are pretty badass, to be honest. Look at this. Cocoon woman. Yeah, concept art from the movie. Badass. Got some space marines. Yeah. These are pretty cool. And, of course, my favorite... Ridley battling the, yeah, very fucking cool. My favorite scene from the from the movie, probably. How can you go wrong with that? So, yeah, just really stoked to rewatch the movie. It's a favorite of mine, and uh, it's actually been a pretty long time since I've seen it. I probably haven't watched it since I was like a teenager. So, I'm clearly not a teenager anymore. It's been a while. Um, more movies. I heard this is amazing, um, so I, I had to have it. I'll be honest, I, I didn't have a lot of faith when it when it came out, I just kind of swept it under the rug, just forgot about it. Like, I don't care. It's probably not good. Uh, that was unfair of me to say, and v stupid, really, because um, I heard this is fucking great. This is the, that newest uh, season of Twin Peaks that they did a couple years back. Had to get it. I've been going on another uh, Twin Peaks kick lately. Had to get it. Had this. Had to get it. Had to see it. Haven't seen it yet, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm working my way through the original series. There are like eight discs here. It, it, there's a lot of shit here to watch, and I'm, I couldn't be happier. Eight discs of, of material. Um, a running time of over 17 hours. <laughs> so I'm in for, for a treat, I'm sure. Uh, pick this up. This. Uh, I went to one of my local media stores and was just hoping to find the first movie, not really necessarily expecting to find it, and I didn't find it necessarily, but I found this three uh, trilogy set of uh, Trancers. Uh, this was a, uh, a full moon feature, like a sci-fi movie. I always heard it was pretty cool. I did not know there were three, um, but there are, <laughs> so I guess I'll watch all three of them. Um, got Tim Thomerson from uh, Dollman in this movie. Dollman was really fucking cool. If you haven't seen Dollman, um, not a horror movie. I know it's full moon, but I guess they did do some like sci-fi stuff. Not a horror movie at all, but it's it's like one of those sci-fi movies <clears throat> that I think horror fans could latch onto pretty easily. Oh, it, yeah, really, really surprisingly entertaining movie. But yeah, I'm stoked to watch Trancers. Um, another one I've been after for a while. Um, a lot of people call this Dario Argento's best movie which is crazy because he did Suspiria and how amazing is that? But we got Inferno. This is kind of, just from what I've gathered over the years, neck and neck, it seems like people, if they choose their favorite Argento movie, it's either Inferno or Suspiria. But a lot of people angle towards this one. And I've never seen it. Um, I'm actually, I mean, I'm <laughs> fairly new to Italian horror. I mean, I've kind of dabbled in it over the last 15 years slowly, you know, slow, like I do things, slowly been getting more and more into it. I only really even got Suspiria like two years ago, two, three years ago. Loved it, of course. Um, yeah, only a couple more things here. We're all done with movies and music. Um, I bought a comic book. Uh, I have been buying comic books. Oh, shit, now I bought a few comics. Hold on. I forgot about that. I bought comics on two separate occasions. Um, I just got this yesterday. I don't know exactly when this came out. Um, it's not new by any means, though. I, I, I'm not going to open it right now. But uh, um, <clears throat> a comic series I really like called Hack Slash. Uh, this is a, a uh, Hack Slash uh, spinoff called Resurrection. Really, really good if you like violent basically just violent comic books looking at hack, hack slash 
and those uh, in the LB LGBTQ community, um, maybe you'll think this is cool. Uh, I mean, I assume the, you know the main character, Cassie Hack. She is uh, she is a young lesbian woman. Um, definitely one of my favorite comic characters. Um, she's fucking incredible. Uh, but anyways, yeah, Hack Slash, very 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 fun comic. Um, and I also bought a regular book, regular ass book. Um, just I've always been curious about it. It's not that long. <laughs> I mean, I've read long books. Don't get me wrong, but uh, yeah, I got I Am Legend. Just lately, uh, watched a just watched a thing about the movie, uh, like a like not really a documentary, but someone made a video about this movie. Um, yeah, it really made me want to read the book. Uh, a couple more comics. Um, this is book three in the series. I have one and two, so but I haven't read them yet. But uh, Batman Reptilian. Just looks really cool. Written by Garth Ennis, who is possibly my favorite comic writer of all time. Um, King Spawn, uh, new new Spawn series. I've, I've been a Spawn fan since the '90s, so I had to get that. Why not, right? Apparently, they're coming out with a Gunslinger Spawn soon, so they're going back to that old. Uh, Spawn stuff that, that they did back then where they did all kinds of spin-offs and stuff. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, Hellboy and the BPRD. This is the most recent uh, miniseries. Always been a, a big fan. Uh, Hellboy's one of my all-time favorites. BPRD, if you don't know, is the comic that Hellboy came out of, actually. He started off as just a character and he, and he just ended up taking off. So yeah, I got both issues of that. Stoked to read them. Uh, and this is all I got. I thought that was pretty fun. Um, <clears throat> a lot of different things, just kind of, you know, summing up my, my interests, I guess you could say. Um, yeah, probably do, probably next. I really want to get back to doing uh, my horror movie collection videos. And um, yeah, I think we're due one of those. And I think I want, I, I want to get back to doing my tape collection videos too. I just get, uh, <laughs> I just get uh, unfocused real easy. So, I've had a lot of ideas that I've wanted to work on for like, for a while now, and uh, I don't know. It just takes me a while to get to them. But anyways, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for stopping by. We will talk soon. Cheers.